Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode oh, of Mix Morris. I've got my Riley boy here. You're nice and loud today. And uh, what have we been doing today? Where have we been? Shopping B&Q. Been shopping at B&Q. We're in Tesco's. Done a bit of a, um, a nightly shop. Cause what? Um, today? Uh, we're going to do an experiment today. It's going to be like being at school. We're going to experiment. <laughs> um, What'd you do? So we've been to B&Q. Picked up some new doors, architraves, hinges, and what have you for, for in the house. We're upgrading around the house. What'd you do? And um, I'll tell you in a minute. And then we went to Tesco's just to get some food for tonight because I've got work tonight. And uh, what you got? Mint. I think you've got mints tonight. Cottage pie, I think you've got tonight. Yummy, yummy. You like cottage I pie. I like. I am working tonight, yeah. <laughs> um, so today's video, um, this is going to be more aimed at your small engine people, your lawn mowers, your strimmers, your trimmers, your weed whackers, your blowers, your, your, your packers, whatever you've got in, in a garage. Uh, this is also aimed towards a commercial guy if, if, you're, able to, if you're willing to do, to do this, okay? So currently in the UK, as of the 1st of September, E10 fuel is in and in to stay, which has got 10% ethanol byproduct within it. And currently we have E95, E97, 98 um, octane fuels, uh, which have up to five and 7% ethanol. Uh, ethanol is not good for your small engine. Not good at all, is it? Mm -hmm. So it affects your gaskets, your diaphragms, your O-rings, uh, all your seats and your seals. It affects all of that. It eats away at them. It makes them go, go all horrible. And the fuel um, breaks down and turns into sludge, which, which, which will then eventually turns like water, bioproduct, and it, that'll make all your carburetors go all rusty and yucky and horrible, okay? That's the problem with it. So how do we combine that? How, how do we combat that? What we need to do is go to the petrol station, buy five litres of E10 uh, for the experiment, and I'm gonna show you how to remove the ethanol, um, or reduce it drastically, out of the petrol, which then makes it nigh or near enough ethanol-free gas, okay? And then after that, we'll be putting something else in just to give it a bit more pizzazz. Okay, so that's what we're going to be doing. Now this, as I say, is going to be for your small engine guys, your lawnmower guys, people doing um, just gardening on, on a small scale, but for you guys who are commercial, who are buying big, big, big um, amounts of fuel a day, this may be a bit of a pain in the bum for you guys to do bigger, this. Yeah, bigger, 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 yeah. So if you're buying like 20 or 30 litres at a time, um, minimum, you may not want to go down this road, you may want to go down the road of buying the um, ethanol shield products or like your Aspen fuels and, and your pre-made um, fuels already made up, which is uh, reduced in ethanol content. That may have to be the road you have to go down. But for the likes of, of, of uh, Billy, Joe, Bob and me, um, who are just in a shed, and we just run our own equipment or d doing service and repair work, uh, to get 20 litres of fuel, which may last you, you know, three or four oh. weeks, yeah, three or four weeks, you may want to go down this road and, and remove the ethanol this way. It is a bit messy, but the choice is yours. Um, also, this will benefit you come the winter time if you do this process. Um, when you've got ethanol-free gas inside your machines, you can then add some kind of stabilant um, as well, and then you can leave your fuel inside the machines and it won't go off. Um, that, that's, that's an advantage. You can also not put any um, protect, uh, uh, shields in there over winter because it's ethanol-free, it, it will reduce the likelihood of your carburetors gunk up and what have you. So it does have some benefits. But E10 fuel is here to stay. And uh, unless you do certain things to it or change the route which you go down, then you're going to be having carburetor problems. This is great for people like me because if people don't bother to do it, I'll be having lots of carburetor cleans coming my way within the next year. So I'm looking forward to that. So this video is all about how to remove the ethanol out of the E10 fuel. And there's a process to follow and it's very, very simple. It won't cost you a lot of money to do so. If this is the first time you're watching Mixed Mowers, don't forget to hit the old subscribe button, whack the old bell. <laughs> That way you'll be told one done a video or two on my Saturday night wiki live stream, which starts at 6.30 p.m. UK time. So without further ado, let's get down and dirty and let's remove this ethanol out of this E10 petrol. Okay, so for this um, procedure, it needs to be well ventilated. I have my barn doors wide open in my shed. Plenty of ventilation. I've also got a fan going in the background as well. Right, so the first thing you're gonna need is a container. I picked this up off of eBay. You don't have to have this one. You can have anything similar. What I do recommend, it must have a tap on it um, as well. Now, the problem is, is that this tap is only so far, okay? If a tap was on the bottom, it'd be perfect. I could tip it up like so, but there's still a bit of a lip, okay, on here. So it's not, the, it's not the most ideal, 
but there are ways of extracting the fuel out as well. I do have an electric extractor, but uh, just try and do the best you can do. What you could also do is just put a very small hole in here beforehand and put a little tiny rubber bung in the bottom maybe with a tap on it, a little fuel tap. That would work, that would work absolutely brilliant, okay? So I've got myself um, a nice little container there, okay? Which has got a tap on, I'm sure the tap's done up nice and tight. Got no leakages. And then I've got a top here. Now over here I've marked from um, half a litre up to 10 litres, okay? Um, and the half in between and the quarters as well in between. All been done by measuring out just water, okay? So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna pour, should be five litres worth of um, E10 fuel into this container. Now you can mix up any quantity you, you like, okay? But I'm, I've purchased five litres. I think it was just over five litres, but we're going, we're going to go to the five litre mark anyway. No smoking, no naked flames around here, because uh, obviously it, it is petrol, highly combustible. We're nearly there, we need to do a bit more tipping up. Now the reason I purchased this, this particular canister is because it's see-through, okay? And we should be roughly five liters if a petrol pump's calibrated. Nearly there. I ain't far out. Let's have a look there. It was just over five liters. That is just under. So we've got a bit more in here to go. Not a lot more. Let's try that. Right, that is five litres worth of petrol, and I've got probably about 20 pence in there as well. So exactly five litres worth of fuel in there. Make sure you're picking that up. We're trying to get a bit closer maybe, just for argument's sake. And then the angle is slightly different as well, so you may pick up a slightly different angle. So that's exactly five litres of fuel. Now, you can, you can just chuck in, um, your tap water in here, okay, just, just your standard tap water, but I wouldn't recommend it, only because tap water does have minerals in it and other other bits and pieces that they put in the in the tap water to make it make it drinkable. So what I recommend is picking up some deionized water instead, okay? That's what I would recommend. And also you want a container, a jug, or something to measure the water in here as well. I've bought a brand new jug which should be dedicated to a workshop and not to uh, Mrs. P. I'm just going to open up the deionized water, the ionized, and there should be, how much is in here? Let's have a look, I think it's two litre. Uh, 2.5 litre in here, so we want to go to two litres, okay, of deionized water. So two litres is going to be right up to here, right to the top. So I'm going to do it in, I'm going to do it in one litre increments, okay. Right, so that is just over one litre. A little bit, a little bit too far. We're just over a steel. And that should be roughly one litre. Okay, now what I'm gonna do with this, I'm just gonna pour a couple of drops of standard food coloring into um, the petrol. And the only reason I'm doing that is just for this experiment only, okay? You do not have to add anything into it. Just to give it a bit of a different color. And I'm gonna pour that straight into my petrol. So we now have six liters up to the mark, and I'm going to pour another um, one litre straight into the jug. Yep. So the total cost of this so far is the cost of the fuel and the cost of the deionized water. And the deionized water is only very, very cheap. It's not. It's not expensive. 
we can just use tap water, okay, but I just wouldn't recommend it. Uh, it's absolutely bang on the mark. I'll show half a litre left. I'm going to put another couple of drops of this um, food colouring into there as well. That would be enough. Put that on one side. So that's just purpose of exercise. That's all it is, is just to try and show you guys the, the difference in water line. Okay. Mix that up. The match DNI's water can go into there, which should take us up to seven litres. If I measured out my jug right, yeah. Let me bring it in a bit closer for you. You can now see once that settles down, I'm exactly up to seven liters, and you can see the difference in line in the in the fuel as well. Okay, you can see the difference in uh, from what's petrol and what is actually um, water. Right. Next thing you want to do is very very simply. Screw the container, the top of the container back on. Nice and tight. Like so. And then all we then want to do is give this a darn good shake. Now you may get a bit of leakage because of it. obviously the petrol vapors want to try and escape best they can. So don't go mad mad, but it wants to be oscillated and shook it up, okay? Because we're trying to agitate this so that the um the fuel mixes with the water and the ethanol is taken out, okay? So this needs to be mixed up for about a minute. I'll come back once I've done so. Okay, that's now been shook up for around about three or four minutes, quite violently. As you can see, the, the petrol is now completely cloudy. That's where the ethanol and water has started to react with each other now. And there is only two litres of water, deionized water, in this um, in this cylinder container. And um, hopefully by tomorrow, uh, we'll have an experiment um, answer where this line here, which is at two litres, in fact, it's already gone up a touch, uh, will actually rise probably to around about three litres, something like that. Um, this will be completely sealed, okay, and um, no one's going to touch this apart from me um, tomorrow morning when I, when I get out of bed and come down to the shed. But as you can see, we've got a line here up to around about just over two litres now already, which has already started reacting. But you want to let, let it settle, okay, and then you'll see a definitive line a bit later on. And the line, the, the two lines would be petrol on top, water, and ethanol in the bottom because it, the ethanol is attracted to the water, to the water. And then hopefully, once we've done that overnight and let it settle. We'll have ethanol free fuel in the top and water and ethanol in the bottom. So we'll come back tomorrow and we'll see how um, the, the results stand. Okay, so it is now the next day, okay? Um, and we've, we've already put our water in and we've put our, our fuel in and we're still up to seven, exactly seven litres. So we haven't gained anything at all, okay? So we had um, five litres of fuel and two litres of um, of water, which I put some colouring in just just for the experiment only. Okay, you don't have to do that. And as I say, I would recommend not using tap water, but using deionized water, um, deionized water instead. Sorry, buddy. That's what I would recommend. But you can just use tap water if you want to. So let's have a look at results. And this has been shaken up fully overnight, or before I left, it got shaken up violently, and then it's been left here overnight, fully sealed. Um, and good to go. N nothing's been nothing's been reduced or, or mucked with since I last touched this um, last night. Okay, so let's have a little look <clears throat> at the results. Hopefully, I might turn my light off. I might get a bit of a bit of shine coming off, but we shall see. So as you can see, we're up to the um, seven liter mark thereabouts. Okay. In fact, let's just undo that a little bit. It might be a bit of a, a bit of gas in there. Side, Daddy? It does expand a bit, doesn't it? There's just petrol in there, buddy. There you go. So just take the expansion out and we're up to, yeah, just under, well, it no, depends what angle you're at, but I, I can see seven litres where up at the angle I'm sat at. So seven litres in there. Uh, so we should have um, two litres of, exactly two litres of uh, red product, which is your water. You can see the ethanol all sat up on top of there, like all that gunk, okay? That's all the ethanol bio, bio product on there. And if we come down, you can actually see, there's the two litre mark just there. And we're up to just over two and a quarter, nearly two and a half litres 
of uh, of product with it with its gunk on top. So we have actually um, removed uh, the ethanol out of the petrol, dropped it down, and which is attracted by water, and put that into the bottom. And we have now gone up to just just over, I'd say, quarter of a litre of uh, of water and ethanol now. So we've got we've still got the same total amount of product, but we have just lost a little bit of fuel. Uh, which is actually your ethanol. So your ethanol has now been um, separated from your fuel. So now the next thing to do is to try and remove um, the, the two products. Now, obviously, you know, without having the exact correct container to do this, this is going to be quite difficult, okay? <clears throat> so what I recommend you doing is just get a few jugs. That's what I've got. That way you can then pour exact, exactly the, 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 the product you want and a product you don't want, okay? Say again, Riley boy. They order what? That. Yeah, I've ordered this, yeah. So what I'm going to do is, uh, for this exercise, I'm going to literally bring this this round. Uh -huh. Two seconds, mate. And I'm going to tip this one up so it sits slightly on the screw width. Let me just bring this round. And the reason I've done that is, ju is just to raise the level of, of the tap, okay? Because I don't want to put any petrol in here, although I may have to remove it a bit later on. I may have to bring it all the way up like so. In fact, let, let's do that. It's not very easy to do with Riley Boy here, but uh, you need to be a bit, bit careful. Now we've got good ventilation here. Both barn doors are open. And um, no naked flames of any sort, so we're, we're completely in the clear. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to just very, very gently open up my valve. Let me just make sure you're getting this. Yes, you are. Let me just bring around a smidge. I'm now going to remove the water stroke ethanol content out of this container. Daddy. Yes, buddy. It's not apple juice. It's, it, it looks like apple juice, but I can assure you it ain't. How long um, is that one? How long? How long does it take? It takes a little while. So we're going to remove. Now you need to look on look on Amazon. This is not the this is not the best the best container to use. Okay, it's not the best, but it it will do, and I can siphon most of it out. Now what you can also do. If you haven't got um, any jugs, you can purchase off of uh, Amazon a little special little device, which my mate Henry purchased me one of these, What's that? which is a very special um, sucking machine, it's which noisy. you can put down here below the tap. It's, it's a little bit noisy, not too bad. And you turn it on, and that will then suck out the fuel of the, the water right down, the, near enough, right down the very, very bottom. Daddy. So we're going to stop there. I'm going to bring the other jug in. Not and these, I think these are only about four or five pound off of, a, off of um, Amazon or wherever you want to get them. But you can get near enough right the way down. Daddy. Yeah, buddy. It is a little bit noisy. How long? Okay. Now I want to remove most of this bioproduct out, okay? You have to tip it up a little tiny bit more. Ow. And I'll get right down in there. We're nearly there. Let's just let that settle. Go down the bottom again. Take this a smidging out again. That's going to be, there's a little tiny bit of water in there, just a very small amount, but there's also a bit of petrol too. And you'll see what I mean in two seconds. That's it. That's all of it out. So now I'm going to remove the tap. Take that out. Tip that back down. Now, let me show you the results here now, okay? So let me just measure this up to exactly uh, two litres, which is what we had without spilling too much, Mick. Is it you? Yeah. Right, that's bang on two litres. So now, we have exactly 
four and a half liters of um, ethanol free fuel, four and a half liters. So that, that's good, okay. We also have here in this big jug, very, very careful without spilling any. Yeah, be well. We also have um, two liters of, of content, but this top half here, look at all that sludge in there. Let me just show you. Let me take you off the old stand. So we also have two liter, two liter volume, but look at all that sludge on the top. Can you see that, all that sludge? So all of that is bio product, okay? That's no good for your engine, okay? That, that's what was sitting on top of the petrol, okay? Um, so that's no good. So we have two liters there, and we also have, should be about half a liter. Uh, it's just over half a liter, because we have taken some of this sludge out as well, you see. So in total, we have two, um, two and a half, uh, two litres, six, sixteen hundred. we have, uh, uh, t sorry, 2.6 we have, um, of total content removed out, out of this, out of this uh, container. We have a little bit of sludge on the top of this one, as you can see, and we have a, quite a fair amount on top of this one just here, as you can see as well, okay? So we're at 2,000, 600 millilitres, which is just over two and a half litres of, of fuel, uh, of water and ethanol removed, okay? And in here, as you can see, there is not one ounce of uh, ethanol now in, in, this, uh, in this product here. So we now have ethanol-free uh, petrol, okay? So give us two ticks and we'll move on to the next step. Okay, so now I've disposed of that, um, that bioproduct um, successfully um, and uh, correctly, as it should be. Um, the next thing to do is now we have this ethanol-free fuel, we have removed some of the, um, the ignition properties of what actually makes this flammable out of here as well by removing some of the ethanol. Now what I re now recommend to do is to pick yourself up. Now this is, um, this is a Lucas product, which is what Henry from Mowers and Blowers is sponsored by. I'm not sponsored. I got this off of Amazon. This is a Octane Booster, okay? Um, now it simply says on the, on, on the old instructions here, all it says is to tip um, the entire bottle into, uh, your, into your tank of fuel, which is for a car, um, and then uh, top it up, uh, up to full, and away you go. Now that's the instruction, okay? It doesn't actually give you any more finer measurements than that. So I'm just basing this over here in the UK. The average car is around about um, 70 to 80 pound of fuel to fill one of these up, and you'll put one of these in, into a car tank of about 70 to 80 pound. That's about the best I can do it. So you wanna put in 10% of, of, of that. So I'm putting in five liters, roughly five liters under, um, which is, uh, this is a 444 mil. So I've put in 44.4 uh, 44, 44 .4 milliliters into the five liter tank, okay? That's, that, that's a rough conversion, okay? So then in goes your octane booster, okay? Into there, just literally gonna just pour a bit of petrol out just to swirl that out. So now we have octane booster gone back in which gives you a petrol, just a little bit more pizzazz, okay? It makes it a little bit more flammable than what perhaps it was beforehand. Give that a good shake up. Shake Just to mix it up. Uh, can I just get in here, Riley boy? This is my petrol can that I use. And then once you've done that, all you're gonna want to do is transfer your fuel from the container into your designating designated uh, fuel canister that you use on a regular basis. And that's exactly how you remove um, the ethanol out of um, your E10 fuel that is currently available here and gonna be available for on ongoing over here in the UK. As you can see, I've literally just about got every single drop of ethanol and water out of this product. Now what you can do is as you, as you um, fill your, your can back up for, for your designated um, use, what you can then do is the very, very last bit, you can either discard it if it's got any water content in there or just pour it into, into, into a jug and just finally, finally um, 
uh, pour it out so you get all of it out completely. But uh, I, I'm not too over jealous. What I'm going to do is I should drain three quarters of it out. There's a there is just a few dots of water. That's all it is. No, nothing nothing special. Just a few a few bits and pieces. Um, I'm going to get as low as I can. Right out as far as we can go. And then there will be some content left in the bottom of this, this drum. This drum was purchased off of eBay, off of Amazon by myself. I think it was about 19 quid. And do you know what? It's not a bad container. It's probably not the best container in the world to have petrol in. But there you go. We, we need to work around these little problems. But So you can look them up. Uh, if you can find anything that's any better, then please leave me a comment in the comment section with a link to what a container that you feel is even better. Ideally, what, what you want is is a container <coughs> that um, has a tap right at the very, very bottom, but also has no lip underneath. So now what I'm gonna do, I'm now gonna undo this container at the top. I'm now gonna get my biggest jug I've got. I'm gonna give it a bit of a clean. <coughs> clean, 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 Riley boy, exactly that. Oil. Get a bit of a clean. Daddy. Hang on, buddy. And now what I'm gonna do is just pour the very, very last segments of this out into this container here, and we get every single drop out, every single bit. Okay. There's a little bit of water in there, not a lot, a little tiny bit of water. And you'll see it right down the bottom. All right, that is a container completely empty. I'll leave that container open so that'll all evaporate off. And as you can see, right down in the very, very bottom is a very, very small amount of water. Very small amount indeed. Now what I'm gonna do is very carefully pour that into my container. And I'm just gonna leave the water behind. And as soon as the water starts to creep too far to the tank, which is gonna be there, that is the, what's left of the bio product that we had before. That's going to be stored correctly in a container and then taken down with tip to be getting rid of. Yeah. <clears throat> so now we have 100% nylon ethanol free petrol. Now in my, in my container that I use on a daily basis with octane booster also fitted into it and the bio product's been removed from your E10 fuel. Just like so. Yeah, sure. Okay, so there's your video. Uh, E10 fuel and ethanol, how to remove it. Um, very, very simple, very, very quick and easy. It takes overnight to do it. So if you're a commercial guy, yeah, you know, I don't think, I don't think you're gonna bother doing it. But if you're just a, a, a weekend warrior, grass cutter, or just have your, have your, have your stuff indoor, in, in the shed and just do your own stuff, then this is perfect for you. Um, if you're gonna be buying 10 liters of fuel, which is generally what I buy, 10 liters, then you wanna be putting about four liters of water in. So make sure your container is big enough. Um, ideally, you want about a 25 liter drum if you can get one, that, that, that's, that's perfect. Uh, if you're buying five liters, then two, two liters of water is fine. Uh, I would recommend using deionized water rather than just tap water, but it's not essential, you know, but there are other bits and pieces in normal tap water which make it drinkable uh, that perhaps you don't want in your fuel, okay? So deionized water is very, very cheap anyway and available on Amazon. Um, literally just follow the process that I've given you, just pour your petrol in, pour your water in, no need for food coloring if you don't need to. Uh, I did it just, just, for the, just for the experiment. And then give it a real good shake. Shake it like you mean it, baby. Uh, shake it right up for about three or four minutes. Give it a real good violent shake. Make sure that you, your container is up to be, um, the fuel being shaked and whatever, it doesn't all, all splurt out on you. Um, you can come back again about an hour later on, give it another good shake, it doesn't hurt it. Um, and then um, once it's done, let that settle overnight, come back to it the next day, and then you will see a definitive line between, um, if you put two litres in or four litres in, you will see a, a, the marker would have gone up. Uh, once that's done, just extract your, your water out of your fuel and vice versa by doing it with a jug treatment. If you can, you can get it right down to perfect. And then that way you've then got a slightly reduced amount of petrol with all your ethanol and your water then removed 
and then you've then got ethanol free petrol and then all you need to do is I would recommend putting an octane booster in there which is just gives you a little um, bit of petrol just a little bit more pizzazz <laughs> just so because you have removed some of some of the ingredients pads. out of the uh, out of the fuel which makes it ignite so by putting in octane booster you're, you're not going to hurt it and if you put in too much it's not going to be a massive issue either it's not it's not you know ideally you want your fuel to, to catch fire so it's, it's, it's not it's not gonna be a problem this is just a booster um, it's not actually part of the ingredients that actually put into the fuel to make it ignite it's just to, just to get a bit more boost so if you put if you put in half a bottle in a 10 litre in a 10 litre drum I don't see it being a massive issue um, so there you go that's how I do it apart from that if you don't follow the process and just just continue buying e10 fuel and storing your machines um, in the winter and leaving the fuel in there for a long time I will see you in about three months time when your carburetor starts to play up and I'll be looking forward to servicing your machine for you Hopefully you enjoyed this little episode of Mixed Mo's, and if you did, give it a big thumbs up, leave any comments you've got down below. Don't forget to hit the old subscribe button and whack the old bell. Yay! That way you'll be told one's on a video or two on my Saturday night wiki live stream, which starts at 6.30 p.m. UK time. We we'll look forward to the next episode of Mixed Mo's very, very soon. But until then, people, don't forget, much more importantly, take care easy. <laughs>